the Hoover Blaze upright vacuum cleaner is not a cleaner renowned for its highest quality of construction nor its filtration efficiency however one cannot hold the fact that this has a completely knackered cable against it and in this video we are going to well not replace it we're going to cut this one down and rewire it so let us open this thing up and repair it so it can carry on being mediocre for some more time to come. Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner chums. How are you today? We have one of these to look at. These are fabulously terrible looking. I haven't tried it yet because I can't. Because if we flip down the upper cord hook and remove the cable, we can see that the owner has Run it over with itself. Okay. Look at that. Now, I did tell you that I was going to be replacing the cable. However, there is still a lot of flex on the good side of this. So, what I think we should try and do is basically chop it and reconnect it in. That is the plan. Anyway, let's just remove the pet hair remover brush release the bin take off the crevice tool and extension wand extension wand's got hoover branded into it that's posh Frikey, the absolutely worn down dusting brush <laughs> and then we'll take the little hose off Obviously, this would have the long hose. You can see the clips for it here. This is how it gets its A rating for energy or suction or whatever. In fact, this isn't the 350 watt one. This is a TH71. 750 watts from 2016, I think. So, not too old. Not too new either. But yeah, that hose is a bodge to make the suction path as small as possible. So it seemed like it's better than it is, right? First thing I'm going to do is take off the handle. Primarily so it's not so huge. There we go. Now, the wire goes in here. The on-off switch is here. So I think we are going to have to dismantle this quite a lot in order to get to where we need to go. So let's start by removing the base plate. Because I think we've got to take all of this bottom part off to then split the spine down. That screwdriver is now too big. There we go. This one, however, is bent. That's very annoying. Third time, lucky. Yeah. These are the lovely screwdrivers that Mr. Ribasiak gave me. Very great they are too. Right. Oh no. Oh nearly. There's two at the front as well. Gosh, back in the day there's been four. Only four. So that is that off. Now I can actually see two screws at the back. And that looks like that may be it. Brush roll turns. 
possibly might not. So actually, no, we did take that off because as soon as we take the hood off, the belt's going to come off with it. screws in here which yes I think they are going to need to remove in order to get this off they're going to get a sod put back in there that very well may not be helping <sighs> now I think it's possibly just a case of aha levering off all around it Double check everything in case there is one last screw missing, and then we'll go in for the kill. Aha! Aha. Wow! <laughs> one hood off. We have what I assume is possibly the original belt. Meh. Now we can remove the pivoting brackets. If I don't drop them down there. All these screws so far are the same size. And that's good. switch off because I can see wires running to it yes we do and then with that <coughs> and a bit of a removal of this lower hose We have the two halves separated. Right, now on to the next bit. Which is going to be yet hundreds more screws to get to where we need to go. The problem is some of these hold other bits on to the point where I'm not entirely sure if they even need to come off, but we shall take them off and play it safe. Oh, there is the bleed valve. The nabbing did need to come off, so that's handy because this is all looking a little bit more floppity now. More screws, more screws, more screws. Probably a cheap vacuum thing is they got because the parts themselves 
are pretty cheap. That's right, very cheap. They need about 150 screws to hold them together to provide even the vaguest semblance of rigidity because each part has been made individually rather than a nice expensive big moulding. There we go. Oh. Oh. And we've still got to go further. Right, this is where the cable comes in and runs down. However, it then disappears off and goes under here. So we're not even close, frankly. We may as well undo the cable grip while we're here. Oh good, that's not fixed. That's okay. In fact, I'm going to shove this out right up out of the way before we go cutting any wires and forgetting about it. Right now, we need to remove about another 73 screws. in order to get to the flipping bit that the cable goes in. the motor out oh wow <laughs> that's the oh, bikey that's the motor exhaust sort of bit motor doesn't look burnt but jesus that is terrible right we can feed this through a little bit now No, we can't. We're going to chop it. Because that is annoying the heck out of me. Oh, it's pulled all the little thin rubber seal off as well. Don't you want to live? Mr. Mr. Bat. problem now though is that that is very short that's more cable than I'd like to lose really hang on what we should do instead is stick a nice new length of flex on it because I don't have anything better than that in fact this is possibly far too good for it but hey ho it is what it is so we shall feed this through the hole and then we need to terminate it. Now on this motor, it is a switched live, so the live goes straight over to the switch. However, I'm not going to terminate it as such. We are going to get some butt connectors, which will be absolutely fine for this task. Find my wire strippers, there you are. We shall simply slip and snip. And that's the last bit of that out the way. Strip this, put a connector on it. Crimp it down. Strip that, put a connector on it, crimp it down. 
next we shall take our lovely overkill new wire strip it across this is some nice premium rubberized flex actually this is what i use on the older machines on the more retro ones that demand a little bit of class but it's all i've got and i'll be honest what i'm charging her just for this one job will pay for this entire job because it's only like 21 pound from a place in the uk called tool station I mean, it's three core but we don't need the extra core so we shall twist those up and round to round. Like that. Blue to blue. Like that. Marvellous. Right, that looks terrible. However, I have to get something on that arm, so hang on. It's fills for washing now. <sighs> right, that's better. Much better indeed. Now I'm going to get this horrible thing back together. I'm actually going to do it this way round. I think. So sit that in there. Like so. This can be pulled pretty much right back through. The connections that go off to the switch. In fact, I think actually that would be better. Ha! It only goes in one way, that's always helpful. So we shall put the wires to the switch back through their little bung, which goes through there, quite a lot through there. And the other rubber bung goes on there like that. And the top simply clicks down into place and we can put about 65 of the screws back in. bit of a half-hearted tidy up whilst I pop all of these ones back on ah oh I've done something very silly 
and haven't put the cable entry grommet onto the new cable. I'm going to pause and do that now because that will take a fair old while. Right, with our cable grommet nicely in place, we can start to wire this back up again. So we need to push the cable at the back of the spine like so then twist it around it's a very dodgy way of doing it around the cord grip the core grip into place otherwise that would go drive me absolutely nuts because it will not hold itself in for toffee without this clamp being done up Marvellous, then we've got to put this terrible little seal back in. Oh my god, that was the worst bit of the entire flipping thing. So far. Oh, that's hateful. Right. Get this flipping back bit on before something moves and I throw this all out the window and owe oh, her a vacuum cleaner, which will be better than this. But I don't want to give her back, you can see that. I want to give her this back. This is the case of doing all of these 10,000 screws back up.
that's it. All of those screws oh, are now in. So we can put this part on, which is the Right, there's three things here, the tool holder, no four things, tool holder, lower cord hook, bleed valve and lower hose holder. They all go in, oh they got their money's worth out of this part, didn't they? I'm now going to if I knew where they were, it's a baby wipe, but I don't know where they are, so I shall not bother. It seems I'm going to give it a wipe down, but meh. they are not immediately by me. This is not going to happen. Oh. The internal hose. Drop these together, we shall put one of the, oh these are different, I don't know, I'm looking at the wrong screws, the hood screws are right behind them, that's very confusing we'll put these down because otherwise this thing's just gonna bob about and be thunderously annoying switch back together and fit that which very badly goes in there like so premium machine this is very much not <laughs> oh poor hoover that's wrong oh I dropped it again the front of this switch clips down that's got it. Clips down under the front. There's a lip in there. Then with the switch in position, we can start to reassemble this properly. Now the belt has to go on the spindle now. This hateful machine is not user serviceable at all. And they seem to think that one needs to strip the entire thing apart just to change a broken dry belt so no marks there the hood sort of slips under the top really then we need one two three possibly four screws who knows there's screws everywhere because it's such cheap horrible plastic so we'll put the hood retaining the screws in first and there's Four of those. Just put my head in front of you a second because one is two are buried right deep in there. Like so. One here. And one here. And with that done, we can take the height adjustment mechanism and sort of smush it together it's ever so ever so fiddly 
to do and as soon as you try and breathe the screwdriver over it the screw comes away because magnetism you've got to hold both sides while not really being able to keep it steady but eventually that's not it See, it only goes in one way. There we go. Clip the wheels in. Now time for the brush roll, which simply clips around the belt. Slides into place with a good few turns to centre up the old belt. Then it is time to push the base plate on and put all four screws back in. Somewhere down here, there we go. All the big ones go around the edges. And the small ones go in the middle. done I have already fitted the plug let's give it a bit of a whirl just going to involve popping the siphon back on finding some electricity but doesn't sound great does it so let's very quickly see what the filter is like on this hateful thing this come off oh yeah oh Jesus
I'll be expecting anything less. We weren't really, were we? Oh. Well, I'm taking the hose out quickly. <laughs> That's better. Just be test carpet to clean up now. And I think we can call this job done. So how to place the cable on a hoover blaze, how to clean the filters on a hoover blaze, how to change the belt, because you have to take the hood off to change the belt on these delightful, horrible things. Oh, even this lovely cables protesting. I know I, I brought you to go on vintage erotica, didn't I? And now you're on this. Well, tough. Really, you've just been paid for. So, marvellous as well. I think. I'll put the ones out there. There's the ones. Don't want to forget the ones now, do we? Ugh. One Hoover Blaze working well again. Thank you very much for watching. Sorry, it's been one heck of a boring video. It was nearly as boring to film as it was for you just to watch, but I've got a bit of Vax action. <sighs> Hope this has helped you. <laughs> I doubt anybody's enjoyed watching the Hoover itself. Thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you soon. Bye-bye.